right, this tutorial is on the Big Ideas Geometry Section 5.4, Equilateral and Isosceles Triangles. Uh, two major objectives. Um, one, that you can use the base angle theorems and then be able to use isosceles and equilateral triangles to help prove congruent parts. So you've probably seen and are familiar with isosceles and equilateral triangles before, um, but isosceles triangles can have exactly two congruent sides, they could have more. So they could have three as well. Um, when they have exactly two sides, those sides are called the legs. Notice this triangle down here in the bottom right, the two markings that indicate that the sides are congruent, those are called the legs. It could be tilted off to the side, um, but anywhere where you see the two markings are the legs. Um, the angles that are formed by the legs is called the vertex angle. So remember last time we talked about included angle. So the angle that is between your two legs or the angle that is touching both of the legs, this blue one right here is the vertex angle. Your third side is the base. That's the side that's not congruent to anything else. Or you could also think it as the side that is opposite of the vertex angle. And then the two angles that are touching the base are called the base angles. So you have two legs and a vertex angle, two base angles and a base. Base angle theorem, so the ones that are down here in this triangle on the bottom, the ones that are touching the base. If the two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. So in this specific triangle, you have line AB congruent to line AC, angle B would be congruent to angle C. Those two are gonna be congruent to each other. We're going to use that a lot to help find the missing angle A, um, knowing that all three of them add up to equal 180. So name some two congruent angles. If we're given this triangle, it's tilted off to the side where DF is congruent to DE. Um, we know that they're congruent because they have the markings on them, and it's also given information to us. Um, so based on the base angle theorem, we have E is congruent to angle F. So even though it's not sitting upright like that first couple examples. Um, the, the base is EF and your base angles are E and F and those two are congruent. D would be considered your vertex angle. Now onto uh, equilateral. If a triangle is equilateral, it's also equiangular and then vice versa. If a triangle is equiangular, it's also equilateral. Um, that basically means if all three sides are equal, then all three angles are equal, and then you can flip it into whatever order you want. So find the measure of angle P, Q, and R. Well, this triangle that we are given is an equilateral because PQ is congruent to QR, is congruent to RP. All three of those markings are made right here. Um, so based on the corollary to the base angle theorem that we just talked about, PQR is also equal angular, and that means that all three angles are equal to each other, and they have to add up to equal 180 degrees. So you could just say that three times any one of the angles, since they're the same, um, has to equal 180. Divide that angle by three and you get 60 for angle P. Q is also 60, R is also 60. So every equiangular triangle has to have the same angle measure and they're all going to be 60 degrees. Now putting some algebra in this diagram, um, we're looking to find the values of X and Y um, based on these two different triangles that are put together to form one larger triangle. So first we'll go ahead and look at the value of Y. Um, the reason why we do that is it's a little less complicated to use the four instead of the X plus one. You, you could use the X plus one first if you wanted, but we're gonna use the Y. Um, because the triangle where Y is marked is equiangular, notice how all three of these angles are equal, they're also equilateral, so all three of the sides have to be congruent to each other. This KN, which represents the Y, is also the same distance as your KL, which is the 4, so simply Y equals 4. That's kind of why we do that one first, because it's a little bit easier. We then can use that information to find the value of X and you're given that x plus one is the distance of this LM. Well, it's also on this um, base angle, so LNM, 
which is this two angle marking down here by the end, is congruent to LMN, which is this two marking down here. Those are your base angles in the isosceles triangle, which also means that the legs are LM and LN. So these two sides are congruent to each other. So you can write this X plus one also on the same side of this LN over here. And since your x plus 1 is on this ln, which is also part of this equilateral triangle, all three of these sides are the same. So x plus 1 is going to be the same distance as your 4. So you're going to set x plus 1 equal to 4, substitute those parts in, subtract 1 on both sides, and you get x equals 3. So your two values are x equals 3 and y equals 4. So we have a lifeguard tower where the line PS is congruent to the line QR, and the angle QPS is congruent to the angle PQR. Explain how you would prove QPS is congruent to PQR, and then explain why that triangle is isosceles. First, what's going to be easier is to probably pull both of these triangles out separately so you can see all of the angles instead of these weird overlapping angles. So PQS is this one over here on the left. The angle one is marked based on the intersection with the other triangle. So angle one is not present here in this one. It is present, however, in the other triangle. So you're given this triangle PQS with angles two and three, and then a PQR with angles one and four. So we can see that based on uh, the overlapping triangles, that the sides that are the same are P and Q based on the reflexive property. So PQ is the same as QP. And then PS is the same as QR. That's given information up here at the top of the problem. And QPS is the same as angle QPR. So QPS is right here and PQR is right here. So we're gonna go ahead and mark those lines as congruent and then mark that angle as congruent. So based on the side angle side theorem, you're given two sides that are congruent and the included angle, you can conclude that the two triangles are congruent. Part B, explain why it's isosceles. So based on part A, we know that angle one is congruent to angle two because the corresponding parts of all congruent triangles are congruent. You've proved the whole triangle, so you can say that since one and two are the, your corresponding parts, the ones that match up, those are congruent to each other. Three and four are corresponding, those match up, they're congruent to each other. And based on the converse of the base angle theorem, um, you can say that with this isosceles triangle, um, PT is congruent to QT, which is where that overlap came from. And PQT is an isosceles triangle. Okay, so usually with pictures like this, it's nice to just draw them out separately away from each other so you're not dealing with the overlapping um, and not sure where the triangles are going to each other. 